Yo guys, what is up? Fly here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a small announcement from War Thunder about a new type of, I guess, branch of military that is going to be added into the game. That is War Thunder Ships. I'm, I'm really being serious right now. War Thunder confirmed later this year that we are going to have, uh, it's going to be called War Thunder Knights of the Sea Naval Battles. I wonder if that is going to be the name. Like, because you know how War Thunder referred to tanks as ground vehicles? Um, I wonder if they're going to refer to ships, because I think War Thunder ship sounds pretty dope. But I wonder if they're going to be like, War Thunder Naval Battles, you know, trying to get it more like cinematic and... You know, easier to advertise or something like that. But anyway, so this just came out today. Um, we're going to be talking about what this means for us, what people are worried about, what I think War Thunder is doing right, and other people are really fucking stressed out about this for some reason. But we'll get all into that in a second. Um, but first, we need to read about what this means or this whole closed beta test means to the community. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of people, when they heard about War Thunder ships, are thinking, oh cool, so World of War ships, but with different damage models and maybe different game modes. You know, the same kind of thing, battleships, aircraft carriers, heavy cruisers, you know, juggernauts of the sea. Well boys, that is not the case at all. Just bear with me, we're gonna read through what the CEO of War Thunder, or Gaj Entertainment, has stated, and we're gonna dissect this and talk about the good, the bad, and the super, super ugly, okay? All right, so here we go. Hopefully I have passed my fifth grade reading test. The high level of realism is one of the key design features of War Thunder. Vehicles are as close to their real life counterparts as possible. Classic large ship battles during the war were contests of patience and planning, where engagements could last from several, several hours to several days or minutes. In War Thunder, where all kinds of vehicles fight in one battle and players can control aircraft, tanks, and ships, it is not possible to change the size of the ships or make time run faster, as everything needs to remain consistent. Our internal tests show that the battles with large battleships would be too long and boring or require design changes that made ships entirely unrealistic. For this reason, we are focusing on fast attack-based craft which are rarely reproduced in games. Well, Medal of Honor had them. But still, I get your point. Ships that are more suitable for the formula of our game. These fast, ag agile, and dangerous knights of the sea are worthy contenders for aircraft and tanks on the ground. Okay, so what does this long paragraph quote mean for us? Well, let's go ahead and dissect it by sentence, sentence by sentence. Okay, so the high level of realism is one of the key design features of War Thunder. He's kind of knocking somebody else. We know who that is. Um, classic large ship battles during the war were contests of patience and planning. So I don't know if you guys knew this, but ships are big, you know. <laughs> ships are slow. They have very long range guns, so when you have a slow ship, in long range engagement area, you can kind of get the picture of what they're talking about. You know, it's slow, it's boring, and um, ship battling, you know, realistic ship battle, I guess, is an art form of how you dance with the waves and position yourself to get the shot and get out there before the enemy shells can hit you. So it's a battle of patience and planning. Um, and they say, or the CEO says, where engagements could last for several, several hours to several days. And I think he's talking about the battles between the HMS Hood and the chasing of the uh, Bismarck. Because we're in several hours, or even lower time than that, the Bismarck was able to destroy the Hood by direct hit from a magazine shot. And the British, or the Royal Navy chased the Bismarck down with swordfishes and in in HMS Nelson or HMS Rod Rodney, I believe. I think Nelson is the class, Rodney was the ship. But uh, you can just see how it can be very quick and then be super, super long of a cat and mouse type of engagement. Now this is where things are starting to paint a picture of how War Thunder ships will be. The CEO says, uh, it is not possible to change the size of the ship 
or make time run faster as everything needs to remain consistent. Our internal testing showed that battles with large battleships would be too long and boring and require design changes that made ships entirely unrealistic. So what this means right now is that another game out there that uh, I think with the scale of the ships and with how fast they move, the ships are moving at, I think, above 100 kilometers an hour. And some people already complain that um, battleship gameplay is boring. So War Thunder is just like, you know, guys, it's not going to work in the model that we have. Um, we're going to find a different way, and that's what we'll get out in a second. But it's confirmed for right now that big ships, such as battleships or maybe even aircraft carriers, will not be in uh, War Thunder at this exact moment. And that might sound kind of... Uh, but I think it's. I think if you look at it a whole different way, it will start. It, it, it will open up to you. Just bear with me. I promise this will all make sense. Um, the uh, the CEO continues on. For this reason, we are focusing on fast attack based craft, which are rarely blah 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 blah. These fast, agile, and dangerous knights of the sea are worthy contenders for aircraft and tanks on the ground. Okay, so why does this sound good? So one reason why X game is, I, I, I've already played it, you know, um, I've already experienced it, I've already done everything in it, I've already, I'm done, you know, like there's only so many times you can do something uh, without more things to put in the variable, it, it, it gets boring to me, okay? Now, with War Thunder saying that, um, they're not going to add big ships, and this ship I call bullshit right now. I think the CEO is just playing defensive. He's not trying to uh, put too much overhype out in the community. He wants to make sure that this thing runs smoothly. So what I what I see right now is a company designing a mode from the most basic stuff to the most complicated stuff, and the community is going to have the ability to give them feedback and basically just a direction to take with War Thunder ships because maybe we don't know what we want yet. Um, I, don't, I don't know about how you guys feel about X game, but it gets quite boring after a while. And one of the only reasons why I still play it is for the DD combat. And that is what War Thunder right now is trying to perfect. And I think once they perfect that type of gameplay, they'll move on from there because you know, War, War Thunder has said no before about certain things, and they have seemed to appear in the game. Okay, so just don't take what they say right now as absolute set in stone. Now, I hope that kind of made sense and kind of opened your mind to um, how important feedback is for this uh, War Thunder ship beta coming out later this year. But tomorrow, what I'll be doing is I'll be talking about what War Thunder ships needs to have to compete and to stay and to be fun and to be rewarding for the player. But before we leave today from this video, we're going to go over the Q&A because this is actually quite, in uh, well, there's some questions that I want to talk about. Okay, so one of them is um, what type of boats will be added in for which nation? Uh, War Thunder responds, during the closed test, we will gradually fill the naval line. Uh, the closed test means not just, you know, for a day or for a week, but this is like over the course of the next year. Um, we will gradually fill the naval line, which will take us to the start of the open test where we anticipate having enough boats of all five ranks for every major nation. We also plan to add new naval modes and locations for the closed test. So we have a lot to discuss with War Thunder ships because, you know, I don't think conquests <laughs> or domination is really going to work in the water. It might have to be some kind of escorting or convoy protecting uh, game modes. Uh, they did say that they want to have enough boats for all rank 5, so that's why I think um, there's going to be big ships in here. I really think there are going to be big ships. I don't know if they're going to be battleships, but they might be battle cruisers, something fast, um, lightly armored or not heavily armored. Um, just quick to the action. 
Next question, will larger ships, <clears throat> excuse me, cruisers, battleships, aircraft carriers be available for player control? If not, why do we need torpedoes? That's a good damn question. Tell you that right now. Larger vessels will not be available for control by players, but will be presented under the control of AI in some game modes. I don't really like I don't like the sound of that because we all know how a AI and anti-air works. They shoot you down from seven kilometers up, moving at a thousand kilometers an hour in your saber. One of the main tasks of combat torpedo boats will be the destruction of larger ships, player controlled destroyers, and other large ships may appear later on. And there it is. There is the door to bigger ships in War Thunder. Now, I can already see some cool game modes popping up. Dude, I'm getting so fucking happy right now. Um, maybe kill the battleship so all the destroyers have to... It's kind of like... Um, I don't know what the game mode is. May, maybe like capture the flag, but like you don't... You, you kill the flag? <laughs> Something like that. Or you pretty much you kill the base, um, but you gotta kill the battleship. Okay, let's see. Uh, player controlled destroyers and other large ships may appear later on. In other game modes, it will be decided based on results of the closed beta. And this is where we need that feedback. We're going to have to give War Thunder feedback. We're going to have to bitch the hardest we've bitched to tailor this game to how we want. If you guys have never been involved on the forums, you need to be involved on the forums because if you're not there, they will just... They will do whatever, you know, 20 people or... I don't know how big War Thunder is. Let's just say 40 people will think the game should go. And without feedback, without, you know, a huge population of people that have already experienced a game kind of like this and want some changes, this is your opportunity to completely tailor a game. Just with your voice and your bitchiness and bleach. We, we got this, okay? Okay, um, nothing really. Will there be, let's just read one more. Will there be special locations for vehicles? Of course, sea battles will involve some new locations in War Thunder Major Maritime Theaters. World War II will be represent, represented Pacific, Atlanta, and Arctic Oceans as well as Mediterranean. I can't wait for the, uh, the assault of Iwo Jima and we have to land tanks and uh, uh, landing craft boats. It's gonna be awesome. But guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, tomorrow's video, we're going to be talking about uh, what War Thunder needs to do with ships to, you know, keep it re relevant for many years. Uh, what they need to do to ships to keep it fun for the players and all that jazz. And then we'll start talking about um, maybe in the same video, we might make another one. I don't want to make these videos pass like 15 minutes because after that people get bored of my voice. Don't blame him. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about the potential um, quick ships that we can have in War Thunder. Thanks for hanging out today, guys. Have a great day. Peace.